Think about it. This northern Palestinian cabinet maker has to drop all his tools, go to Bethlehem for a census, and then shortly after that, there's another warning that comes in another dream slash, is this a nightmare? And he flees to Egypt. And in Egypt, he has no network of friends, no connections, no job, no place to stay. Think of that for Joseph. And then when God spoke an astonishingly difficult word to Joseph, Joseph responded by following the instruction that was given to him in a dream. She was pregnant. He couldn't deny it. The evidence became quite clear. It became brutal. It became manifest. And I'm sure, like most of us, in the face of unpleasant circumstances, at first, maybe he wanted to deny it or not even see it. But there came that day when it was obvious. When the word came to Joseph, the remarkable word we are told in the scriptures, here is how it was met. It said, fear not. Don't be afraid in this crazy, this what appears to be a convoluted way in which God is doing God's next thing in human history. Don't be afraid. It wasn't. Don't be too proud to obey God. Don't be too angry. Don't be too hurt. And don't be too ashamed. For the, in the scriptures, the word came to him was, don't be afraid of living in God's plan. That hits us all in some pretty rough places, doesn't it? The fear that comes in to living in God's plan because it will not be predictable, it will not be easy, it will go beyond your wildest imaginations, and it has to. Otherwise, how could we ascribe it as something that God is doing? And then Joseph models for us that we can we can't obey God by staking everything on God's word alone. And that word came to Joseph in that dream. A dream that he had the invitation to follow. He had a choice. He was free to make. And it's the same kind of choice that we have in our lives. Have you ever had a dream or a thought or an idea when you struggled to discern where it was coming from? Is this a God thing? Or did I just have a rough night last night? I'm sure that Joseph struggled with that as well. I would imagine that. He had to decide, well, is this a false or a true dream? And he interpreted it, and he acted on it. And he was just like, if you think about it, the other dreamer in the scriptures. The other dreamer who was his namesake in the Old Testament. Joseph hanging his life and destiny on the dreams that he had in an Egyptian prison. 
You know what I'm talking about? Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream coat. <laughs> and so when this Joseph heard that command, he put things behind him. He did. He set out to Bethlehem, then to Egypt, and he was obedient to the word of God that came to him in a dream. So now, I believe things like that can still happen today in a way. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that God does not intervene in our lives in such ways again. And so it brings me to what I would uplift as the big idea this morning, okay? So here's the big idea this morning, because things like this can in some way happen where God in, invades in our lives and may have something for us to be about, something for us to do. And the big idea is that God does not give us dreams to torment us. But God will give you that kind of dream to follow to do something about it. And there's another positive word here. And it is this. When you uh, say, okay, I had this encounter that I'm discerning is something God wants me to do that's crazy, but I am to follow in that. Another positive thing that's going to happen is when and because of Joseph's faithfulness, it reminds us of the influence that can happen when we choose to go in God's direction of our life. In one respect, it, it all goes back to a case study we looked at a few weeks ago of John the Baptist. And he baptized and what did he say at the point of baptism? He says, repent and believe the gospel. And the word repentance is that word for a new direction. To follow what God has for each of us. And I don't believe this is just the stuff of ancient literature. But God still, I believe, enters our world in such a way. But think of Joseph's influence. Who was Jesus? Joseph was the father figure of Jesus. And in that home, you think of all the kinds of cliches that we may say about parents and children. They must be true. We, we, we say them all the time. A twig grows in the direction that it's bent or the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Joseph was Jesus' earthly father. And what happens when Jesus prayed? What did Jesus call? What word did Jesus use for God in his prayer? It was the Aramaic word Abba. I'm not talking about a rock band. But Abba is the Aramaic word. Formally, you could translate it father, but it really is an informal word, which essentially means papa or daddy. Now, to be able to pray and use language of that kind of intimate relationship with the holy God that Jesus was able to express, oh, papa. I think a lot of that came how he experienced the life of Joseph. Remarkable. So Joseph trusted the angel's words, and he took a chance. He took a chance. Joseph stayed with Mary, trusting that her child was of the Holy Spirit, and I guess you could say that what Joseph required in proof 
he made up for in faith. As he trusted, as he took a chance on the promise and the hope that this child, this Jesus, this thing that God was doing in Mary and for the human condition, the promise of hope that this child offered. And as the story goes on, Joseph and Mary, they did name him Jesus as was also indicated in the dream as to what the name would be. The very name Jesus, if you think of it, literally signals the entrance of God into human experience. For the angel said, you will give his name Jesus. Why? And the message continued, because he will save his people. Well, may this be our experience as well in our time. That there will be those times when we find ourselves confused. There will be. Not knowing how to react to, uh, to our times. How, what am I to do with this? How we are to react to events, not knowing how or to understand what was coming in that dream. But just as a young husband in Bethlehem undergoes tremendous confusion about his situation, he turns the situation into an extraordinary love and an extraordinary trust. And so can we. So can you. God did this at the nativity. And God does it in our time as well. God's people said,